What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we back, we back. Oh, girl, let me get myself together. Listen, I just put up a video. It'll probably most likely be up before this video up. So if you want to hear about the Tamika of it all with her receipts, uh, the candy and her speak on it and Tamar response and all of that stuff or whatever, I put that in a whole separate video because I had a whole lot to say and I didn't want it to overwhelm this video, okay? Because I put some personal stuff in there and everything. So if you want to talk about that, go look at that video. But um, I hope everybody has been doing well. And I don't know, it, it's been some mess that's been going on besides the stuff that's really been popping and been popping today. Um, Cause I mean, when Tamika dropped them, them, them receipts, girl, she dropped them. She said, Poof. I said, wow. Come to find out, Tamika said, uh-uh, girl, you know, I'm being cute and I'm being real generous by putting it out there saying that y'all owe me $30,000 that y'all took. Plus the goddamn um taxes that I had to pay on the stuff that I never got. Oh, baby, but it's way more than that. I said, what? My whole thing is, how the heck if you ain't take the um if you ain't take the ta uh the, the money and the royalties and all of that stuff, and I want you to come on here and call Miss Diane a liar because Miss Diane said that stuff like it was happening right then and there. Mama had a clear memory. It wasn't rehearsed, she ain't had to think about it or nothing. She said she got in touch with this person. He probably dead by now, but we got in touch with this person. He the one that helped set this up, whatever, and we was doing this, 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 and your check was supposed to go to New York, but the check was going to Hampton, Georgia. I said, now how the fuck y'all gonna get that shit messed up? NY and GA. I said, ooh. Oh, all right. Mama Gloria, this your fault. And that's exactly what I said in that video. This is your fault. But anyway, let's just get up into the video. I hope y'all didn't have a better time than most of the people that we about to talk about. Okay. Case in point, since we still talking about Atlanta stuff, girl, what's going on with them down there in Atlanta, baby? It's a lot of mess. All right. A lot of the drama is coming from down there. Case in point. Eva Marcel, you still down there in Atlanta? Or should I call you madam? Let me tell y'all this. Eva gonna be needing a little bit of change or whatever. Um, because she finna start trying to get, I'm pretty sure she finna get spousal support, alimony, and all of that, plus child support. Oh, well, she probably don't need to change because men finna come through. But then again, y'all need to go and stream and watch all the Queen's men. I think it's only two seasons. I'm waiting for the rest. Uh, I don't know if that's the rest of season two that's already out or is it gonna come back at season three? Because, baby, I thought it was coming back at season three. I ain't know season two was gonna have all them damn episodes because season one didn't. But I wasn't complaining, okay? Um, it's very much good. A little bit of Tyler Perry-ish, just a little bit, because he did dabble his hand up in it a little bit, but it ain't too much. To a point where you could tell where he had his little influence in there, but it's not overwhelming, okay? Like his other shows, you know? It's doable. It's 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 a nice time. It's a nice time. And I actually do like Eva on there. You know, she playing this badass bitch or whatever, madam. You know, everybody's scared of her and all this stuff. You know, it's cute. It's cute. Plus, we get to see her titties in the first season. You know what? That sound really, really... Like, I shouldn't have said it, but, you know, it is what it is. That's probably what got... You know, they probably had some arguments in the house about that. And Eva said, this is my body. I can do whatever it is that I want. And you want to know what I can also do? I can file for divorce from your ass. And I was like, oh, my God, Eva, don't go that far. What happened? Like, first, it was Drew and Sidora. Drew and Sidora. Drew and Ralph. All right? And I don't know. Somebody please drop the T down in the video comments. If you know, what does Mimi and Ty got to do with Drew and Ralph, okay? I've mentioned this before, that she did an interview, and she kind of implied that it possibly was something going on between Drew and Ty. Like, what's happening? If you down in Atlanta and you run in the circles, or if y'all just know some stuff, baby, I want to know too, okay? Because, you know, ain't nothing nice. I mean, ain't nothing like, there's nothing like drama okay lesbians be giving it to you all right and i'm psychic too okay drew i ain't know you swaying that way shot it swing my way that's what you get it all right you know moving on from that but eva filed for a divorce from her husband like how many years y'all was together five years okay y'all done had two kids 
and then you adopted her other baby. Y'all remember Eva crazy ass uh, ex? I don't want to call him that because I feel like I think he got like schizophrenia or something. So I'm going to take that back. That's kind of insensitive. But he was abusive. He was just doing a lot. She had to get a strainer, restraining order against him and all that stuff. And at one point, I think, yeah, he got his parental rights taken away because he, um, her um, husband, Michael, he, um, he had adopted her daughter and it was shown on um one of her seasons of real housewives right and so i when i tell you i feel like a lot of us were so blindsided and it wasn't like a oh my god i can't believe that they are divorcing oh my goodness no it's not one of those it's just one of those situations where you didn't hear anything going on in the relationship and you always thought that they was cool. And especially because the last time a lot of us seen them all together was when, you know, Eva was on uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta and he was running for office and things of that such. And she was being very much the supportive wife. And like I said, the adoption of her daughter and, you know, giving birth like she was pregnant just about every season she was on now, you know, and it was just like everything was cool. And then we ain't hear nothing in the news about them or whatever. And then the last, the most recent thing that we saw was when Eva was talking to TMZ about this whole situation between Candy and Tamar and how Tamar had put that uh, subliminal message out there about a peach and her husband who was a whole politician or something like that and had people, some people, thinking that it was either Candy or Eva because Eva was the only one that was on the cast that had a husband who was dealing into politics, right? And, you know, she said it was childish. It was very immature the way that uh, it was handled and put out there, whatever. And the way that Eva was speaking, she was speaking as if her and her husband were very much still together on the same page. Girl, come to find out, as soon as that came out the very next day, Mama said divorce and i said oh wow what happened what happened did he cheat because they said eva cited the marriage as being irretrievably broken ain't that the same thing that um you know drew said in her uh divorce decree or or ralph or whatever girl what is going down in peach land i don't know I don't know. This is kind of sad because I don't like seeing marriages breaking up unless they really, really need to break up. You know, like, I understand if you break up. Some people, they, they be like, if you cheat, that's not enough for me to break up with you. I was one of those people. Like, bitch, you cheat on me, it's over and done with. But I feel like sometimes it's like, maybe as I got older, it's like... Depending on how long I've been with this person, how deep my love go, how low my self-esteem is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It, I guess it's like, I don't know. I can't be mad at a person that will stay in a situation, certain type of marriages or certain type of relationships, you know. But if you continue to let a person cheat on you and just do you dirty, uh, you know, abuse you emotionally, physically or whatever... Girl, I'm going to look at you strange. Like, you must like this. It must be a kink for you, okay? Because why are we still doing this? Mine is the physical abuse because sometimes that's, that's, you know, it'd be hard to get away from that. You know, you got to plot sometimes to get away um, just for your safety. But sometimes it just be like, girl, why are we still doing this? And then other times you'd be like, I ain't know nothing was going on. I want to know what happened because now Michael coming out talking about some. I'm going to do whatever it is I got to do to get my woman back, okay? Show her that I'm the man that she need, all right? She don't need to go no further. You're going to have to tear them papers up because I'm not signing. Uh, sir, I think her own mind is made up. She filed the papers. Let me tell you something. If I ever get married and, and, and I go out and I file the papers, don't come out and say I'm going to do whatever it is that I got to do to uh, get us back together. I filed the papers, okay? That means for you to sign. I ain't filed for separation. I filed for a goddamn divorce, all right? It's too late. It's 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 run its course for me, okay? That's just what it is. But um, I hope they get that together. Paula, um, what's the little girl name that she adopted? Paula first, baby. You know, and she been through a lot with a dumb daddy that she got. Oh, my goodness. Sperm donor, there it is. Moving on from that. Um, the whole situation with 
this just happened. Jermaine Dupri and Bow Wow are back at it again, okay? So, I guess Jermaine Dupri was on an interview with The Breakfast Club or on The Breakfast Club or something like that. And he was, you know, I know he'd been talking about it recently again about how people have been trying to downplay his influence on the creation of 106 in part, you know. Excuse me. He said he wanted that outlet. When we first heard about it, he was just basically saying how he wanted an outlet or whatever. It was created around or for Bow Wow, you know. Bow Wow basically tried to discredit all of that. So that made a lot of people be like, what? You did this for what? You had your hand into what? So a lot of us was kind of like looking at J Jermaine Dupri like, no, I think you're just talking out your ass. Maybe it was an idea, but you're not really the one responsible for it. But the more he talks about it and the more he put more details in it, I believe him at this point, you know? And I just don't understand what is the big deal and what happened within their relationship to make them keep going back and forth in the public like this, okay? Because what was asked of him was that set this off he was asked about his relationship with Bow Wow because when this all came out first initially, Bow Wow came on refuting it, um, going at JD, and then that's when the brat got involved in it or whatever, and you know was basically coming at Bow Wow's throat like you know I whoop your ass, okay? You need to show respect, you know. Um, you getting a little bit too big for your britches. That's what he she was coming at him like, um. And they had asked him about his relationship with Bow Wow and how outside forces, including the media, have altered his perception of him. And, you know, Jermaine Dupri said something about the fact that there's no appreciation for anything in hip hop anymore. And so that's when Bow Wow gets on uh, the Internet and he starts tweeting and he's like, um, you know, focus. He said, don't you got an album to promote? Focus on that instead of bringing me up in every interview you've been doing. I don't bring you up. Grant me the same respect, homie. Um, somebody had called him out talking about his comments was sickening or whatever. He went on ahead and said, I was never signed to So So Deaf. I was on Columbia Records. JD, he claimed that JD lied about his involvement in his music and that he was in, he was discouraging him from um, writing. Truth be told... You can kind of tell when JD wasn't a part of it. I don't believe that. I don't believe that he wasn't involved in his music the way that Bow Wow is saying. Because from what, in truth be told, again, looks can be deceiving. We seen Jermaine Dupri in um, a lot of his videos or whatever. And we can tell, and we knew back in the day when he was first coming up because he was young, he wasn't writing those raps, okay? JD probably was writing them or somebody else on So So Deaf or whatever on that management team, they were writing raps, okay? And so, you know, he wanted to write his own stuff at one point and, you know, JD wasn't allowing him. This is a, 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 according to Bow Wow, you know? He basically felt like JD was stunning him and... um he wasn't allowing him to do a lot of stuff because he wanted his publishing. He wasn't going to get the publishing for it. And I said, oh, so this is all about business. So business got intertwined with personal, and now it's just a kerfuckle of a mess. That's just what it is. And my whole thing is this, you know, I understand trying to stand up for yourself and feeling like you've been done wrong in certain ways or whatever. But if somebody helped me throughout my career and y'all agreed to put this type of image out to make it seem like they did more than what you claim they did, I'm not going to blast them when they're not really blasting me. Okay. Honestly, in this last whole situation that happened between JD and um, Bow Wow with this whole one on System Park incident, I truly don't feel like Bow Wow needed to come out and say anything, okay? Because it wasn't like JD was talking negatively about him. He just said 10 System Park was created for Bow Wow or something of that such. And he got in his feelings over that, you know? And it was... It's, it's weird the way that their relationship is. And it just goes to show looks can be deceiving. Just because people be putting out these videos and they all dancing and they all happy and they do interviews together and everything going to good front. And in truth, true reality, 
they ain't even really speaking with each other. We see the whole stuff that's been happening with Escape. We saw the whole stuff that happened with B2K. We saw what was going on with, um, you know, you the whole time we ain't know Brass B was going through what he was going through. And truth, I still believe him. I don't care what nobody say. I believe him. And I believe that it's the reason why he acts the way that he acts. Okay. You know, um, you just don't know these days. You just don't know these days. But this whole thing with Bow Wow, I feel like Bow Wow has gotten a big head. As soon as Bow Wow became an adult or somewhat of an adult and gained his little bit of independence, he just felt like he was that shit and he was going to always be the shit like that. And he really not. Don't get me wrong. Back in the day, he was, okay? B to the old dub. Come on. All I really want to do is bounce with me. Bounce with me. Yeah. Uh, uh. Let me see you bounce with me now. Shake, shake, shake. Get down to the ground with me now. What? Miss me did all around the town with me now. What you gonna do, shawty? What you gonna do? Bitch, I used to know that whole damn song, okay? I was like, who is this little boy with all his hair? Who is him? It was cute, okay? You know, we was all about Bow Wow and them back in the day. You know, it used to be Bow Wow versus Romeo. I was a Bow Wow girl. I really was. I had his albums and everything. I even, baby, I even had the album that him and Omarion did together. And it was one song. I can't remember what the name is, but oh my goodness. The beat was everything. And I just love the way that they played off each other. I loved it. I loved it. I ain't even gonna lie. But as he got older, he just became real kind of lame to me. The way he moved and everything. And then this whole situation with him and JD, because we really don't know and understand what's going on. It's coming off as real, real lame and very, like, ungrateful. I don't know. I don't know. But, um, y'all tell me how y'all feel about the whole situation. Moving on from that, some good news, actually. The Essence Fest is coming to town, to, um, New Orleans. Down in the New Orleans. Okay, that's how you said it. Down in New Orleans. Am I saying it right? Baby. <laughs> Bit, no. Somebody finna be mad. Baby, I love it when y'all be talking like that. I be sitting there like, can you imagine being in a relationship with somebody from New Orleans? From New Orleans, like, I just want to be the, I just want to see how that is, especially the women. I don't know, like, the men accents is one thing, but when the women talk like that, it's another thing. Like, sometimes when we be listening to Bondi Blue and her um, New Orleans accent be coming out, I be like, oh my God, it's so cute. <laughs> That's my old girl, but I be like, say that word again, bitch. <laughs> It is so funny. But listen, Essence Fest is coming back to town, girl. All right. It's coming back the weekend of July. What? Well, is that a weekend? That is 29. How many days is in December? 30? June? 29, 30. 1, 2, 3. Oh, that's a whole week. That's five days. That's not a weekend. That's multiple days. All right. All right. All right. Moving on. So, they're coming down at June 29th to July 3rd. And it's going to be basically center around, like, celebrating the 50 years of hip-hop. Because, you know, 2023, it's been a big 5-0, okay? And I was like, oh, that's cute or whatever, so who's going to be down there? Girl, they said they got uh, Lauren Hill. I mean... And the only reason why I feel that way, I gave you all of that, is because I don't want to get down there and get my hopes up of seeing Miss Lauren Hill because I love me some Lauren Hill. I love me some Miss Lauren Hill all the way back from when she was on Apollo and they booed her. And she had to come back and shut their asses up. She was a little bit nervous, all right? She was a little bit nervous and the crowd did her dirty. Her voice was shaking a little bit because she was a little bit nervous. And then she came back on and she wrecked that stage. I said, I know that's right. All right, I was here for um, Miss Lauren all the way back then. Then she got into the Fugees, okay? And then, you know, Pride's about to go to jail, baby. They're about to start his trial. And 9 out of 10, I feel like that man is about to go to jail. All right. I'm sorry to say it. I just feel like it's going to happen, okay? Meanwhile, she done went solo. She said, Sister Act 2, Rita, Rita, okay? You know what? She said money do put um, food on the table because it's been putting food on the table off of this one album. Baby, I had a little bit of tax trouble, but baby, guess what? Not no more, okay? Not no more, and I'm still making a little bit of money. Do you know how iconic you have to be to... Have one solo album come out, 
and make and break so many records and get and set so many standards. And nobody has ever reached that. Like, for me, that is iconic. Lauryn Hill don't even have to put out anything new because truth be told, it will not compare. It won't come close. No way will it come close to the miseducation of Lauryn Hill. Like, it is 2023, and that album still is just phenomenal to me, okay? I was listening to it the other day, actually, and I'm just sitting up in here zone. It is a fucking vibe, bitch, okay? Like, I said, Miss Lauryn Hill, you did that. Now, see, you, 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 you probably was in your prime. You was in your prime. You weren't even at your peak yet. And so that's why you was like, girl, I'm going to get here on time. I'm going to go ahead and do this, knock this out or whatever. I got standards too. Y'all not finna dick me around. And so that's why ain't no other music came out. I said, I can fuck with that. I can fuck with that. But mama, I don't know what's going on now because girl, I hope you didn't get the shit together because we don't want to be waiting up in the Superdome, okay? Is that what it's at? The Mercedes Superdome? That's where it's in the New Orleans. Down in the New Orleans, okay? Listen, we don't want to be, we don't be, we don't want to be sitting there waiting. If the show say that you're supposed to be out there at 8.15, you got until 8.30. That's as much as I can give you. And then I'm going to cause a fit, okay? I'm going to be like, what the fuck is going on, Miss Lauren? Okay, Miss Lauren, you got to stop. You got to come there on time, all right? I need you to get there three days before so that you can get out there exactly on time, all right? Because we want to hear it. We want to hear it, and we want to see you, okay? Much love, much respect. And also, my girl, Megan the Stallion is going to be there. Girl, Megan is going to pop out. Have y'all seen how Megan look? Megan took time off to get her man and body right. I said, oh, girl. All right. Mom going to be down there. And I want to go down there just to see her. Monica going to be there, too. Oh, shit, bitch. It's going to be a time. I have yet to get to Essence Fest. And I keep on saying, I want to go down there. I want to go down there. And every time I get ready to buy my ticket to go down there and to make my hotel reservation, something pop off that I couldn't. Last year, it was just straight up depression. That's just what it was. Y'all already know about that. I ain't got to go into that. Girl, I ain't want to do shit last year. I was lying to y'all talking about something. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that, bitch. Did not do a damn thing. But um, anyway, we going to see how that go. Um, I like that. Also, Megan going to be at, what, LA Pride with Mariah Carey? It's a wrap. You know, they're going to be down there doing anything. That's cute. That's cute. That's cute. Okay. I like to see it. You know, I feel like Megan is about to have an era this, this time around. Um, Speaking of eras and speaking of people that's going to come out, Chloe album is supposed to come out tomorrow is Thursday. So it'll be at 11 o'clock tomorrow p.m. But probably 12 o'clock everywhere else on Friday for everybody else. But, you know, time zones. Tomorrow night... Friday morning. That's when it's coming out in pieces. Um, I don't want to give no judgments yet because y'all already know how I feel about the Chloe of uh, the Chloe, the Bailey sisters and all of that stuff or whatever. I like them. I love them a lot, but I have to be fair in my assessments and a lot of stuff. And if I'm being honest, 100% because I can't be fake. I do feel like there's been a few missteps with this rollout with her. Um, and I do feel like she gets unnecessary judgment. Okay. Um, she gets judged real harsh. And sometimes I feel as though she contributes to that. That's just all I'm going to say until I listen to the album and give y'all an honest reaction slash review of it. Okay. And if it ain't what it's supposed to be. I'm going to just have to say that, okay? That's just what it is. Moving on from that, um, the whole situation with Jonathan Mayers, Majors. Y'all, I was so disappointed when I seen that. And at the same time, I just, I was stuck. I was just like, wow. And you want to know why? I wasn't one of the ones that was just out here, you know, bigging this man up and just... Oh, he's so fine. He's so fine. He this. And, you know, it was a debate going on about whether or not he was cute or not or whatever. He's a good looking man. Truth be told, if I was straight, I would have went for him. Okay? Like, y'all know, I don't like fan, fan niggas. I have to say that you fan, but 
I was never really attracted to people like that. You know, I don't know. We just got our different tastes. Um, but, you know, it was a lot of positive things that was coming towards him, you know. And I was just loving the fact that people was jumping on the Jonathan Majors uh, bandwagon, especially after, you know, some, you know, Lovecraft Country. And I think I seen him prior to that in something else, and I cannot remember what it was. And then when he got on Lovecraft Country, they got a lot of more eyes on him. And then he started getting a lot more movie roles or whatever. And then it was just like the end of last year and this year, he's been in just about like four or five different movies, as, you know. He was in Devotion. He was in the Ant-Man movie. He's in Creed 3. He's probably in something else that's going to come out. And he's just been going on and on and on. And then we're seeing all this positive love about him. And, you know, he's not into toxic masculinity and, you know, being comfortable. And, you know, seeing him being with Michael B. Jordan and that brotherhood that they have and that bromance, which was cute because they're two black men that appreciate each other. And that's good. And that's beautiful. Today is Wednesday. Bay Beast Snowfall comes on tonight. Y'all know Louie pregnant in real life? She didn't got unk killed and went and got fucked around and knocked up by another nigga. Bitches ain't loyal. Bitches will do you dirty in a minute. But congratulations, Miss Louie. Um... But anyway, so you got all that positivity going on about him. People just bigging him up. And then all of a sudden, on last week, I think it was the weekend or whatever, it came out saying that he was out there in New York and he didn't get his ass either arrested. Yeah, he got arrested because he was in a taxi or or whoever the fuck with some woman. And the lady said he assaulted her. He strangled her ass. Um, harass her, all this stuff. And I said, what the hell? Now, how we go from knocking a bitch? Mm, the strangulation part is what really got me. I said, what is going on? What pisses you off so bad that you had to choke a bitch like that? Like, what? What is happening? Girl, and then it came out that it was his girlfriend that all of this was happening to. I said, oh my God. And I'm only saying it in a way because she's a white woman and it is so unfortunate that there's some people in some outlets that probably wouldn't give a damn about this story if she was with a black woman. We would have gave a damn because why are you putting your hands on anybody for once and a woman at that, a black woman, you know, we got to be the only ones that care about us because ain't nobody else going to do it. But then you put this white woman and we like, oh, shit, his career is done. That's what a lot of people feel like. His career is done. Because y'all know how they hold these lily white women up. And I'm sorry to say it like that, but that's just what it is, okay? I mean, you was just getting started. Do I feel like his career is finished? No. Because I've been seeing people saying, damn, he about to be on BET movies and Tubi movies and stuff. No, he's not about to go down that far. They're about to put a halt to him. I know he already got a um, commercial endorsement that he was doing for the Army. They pulled that. I would have said pull it anyway. <laughs> that was a misstep on my part. Pull it, okay? But, um, girl, it's just wrong road, wrong move. At your height. You're not even at your peak yet. You're getting there. And right when you was almost on that road to there, you messed up. And I get it. We are a human, but you are bigger than, you're not a regular Joe Schmo, okay? So you can't, unfortunately, be making these little stupid mistakes and then keep on putting out there that, oh, the witness recant her statement. She put two statements out. It's video evidence. It's other witnesses that uh, said what's happened. I'm innocent and all this stuff or whatever. And I'm like, well, where the video at? Okay, either way, even if he is innocent, and I know it's innocent till proven guilty, and some people is guilty till proven innocent, either way it goes, it's still a dent in his reputation. It's still a dent, even if it comes out to be that he didn't do these things. Unfortunately, people going to still hold it over his head that he was put in a position that this happened to him. You know, and that's the unfortunate part about it. And I want people to stop thinking, oh, well, she lying, she lying, she lying. Um, we don't know. 
We don't know. And I don't know if people saying it because it's Jonathan Majors and y'all put him at this high pedestal all of a sudden, or if it's because he's with a white woman or if it's because, you know, what, for whatever reasons, I don't know, but we don't know what goes down. You know, you got other directors coming out, a couple of more directors coming out, basically saying that he was a vicious person to work with. I said, oh, so now y'all want to spill the tea? Mind you, this one person who said that, they had tweeted about this a while ago. And then when this incident came out, they said, ding, 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 there it is. I said, oh, oh, oh okay, okay. You know, and again, this is what you get for putting people so high up on a pedestal and making it seem like they can't be touched and they can't have a little slip up. They can't have a fall from grace a little bit and then rebound. You know, we have to remember that these entertainers are entertainers, but they also are human. Okay, so that means that they are not far from reproach. They are not beyond reproach and that they can't do the same thing we do and make dumb, stupid moves and mistakes and be terrible persons behind the scenes, no matter how much we may like them, because we truly don't know them. We know what's being presented to us, but we don't know them in their everyday life. Okay, they can be the most vile human beings. The people that come off so obnoxious and so evil in their work life or whatever behind the scenes, they could be the nicest people. You know, you just never know. You just never know and vice versa. So I'm not going to say, oh, well, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. No, because I don't put anything past anyone. I'm going to wait till the facts and evidence come out. But at this point in time, this is not a good look, Mr. Jonathan. And the way you're going about it, it's still not a good look. Okay. Um, mom, uh, Sir, just lay low right quick. Just lay low for a second. Um, Gail King's supposed to be, is she leaving Good Morning America or whatever? Because I hear that she is in the process of getting this show, possibly. Um, and I think with Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley, of all people, on CNN. Baby, they said CNN ain't doing good. CNN got some low ratings. Um, and they guess, I guess they're trying to bring Gail King and them in to bring the thing up. Honestly, I don't think that it's going to work. Um, I don't know what type of show this is going to be. I don't think that this is a good move. Um, I would say where I'm at at this point. Um, it's too late in your career to try to move, um, to a network that's not really doing well right about now. I mean, not saying that it's going to continue to not do real because a lot of networks, they have their ups and their peaks and their lows and highs and all that stuff. But, mm-mm. We see how people leave something that was working perfectly fine for them and then they go elsewhere and it doesn't do well and then they get canceled after the first season. I don't want that to happen to Gail King, but, you know, hopefully whatever it is that she's doing, it works out. But truth be told, Gail will be all right. Gail will be all right. Oprah ain't going to let her fail. <laughs> Girl, Oprah got her back. Um... Shout out to Mary J. Blige. Okay, some good news. Mary J. Blige out here working with uh, Lifetime. Now, I remember when they said that she was, they was going to put out a movie or whatever about her albums. Um, One of her songs, Real Love or something like that. But uh, she's back again for another. She's going to executive produce two more movies. Um, it's called Real Love and Mary Off of Real Love the Single and Strength of a Woman. Okay, so they said the two films will be inspired by those songs and they are starting to be they're gonna be released June tenth at eight PM back to back because one follows after the other. So it says, Real Love follows this girl named Kendra who begins her college career in upstate New York and then she meets her film class partner, Ben, played by Da Vinci from um, BMF, who influenced her heavily. Despite their issues, they fall for each other and learn what real love is. And then after that, Strength of the Woman will pick up where real love le leaves off and it jumps ahead 15 years in the process. And she's a successful photographer. She finds herself in a troubled marriage. And she comes to um, terms with the decision she's made for her life. And, you know, the whole situation, what's going on with her and Ben. Because I believe that they break up. And then they try to probably get back together. I don't know. But um, I'm, in I'm in 
to it. You know, anybody black on Lifetime, I'm going to support. Because, listen, Lifetime, we got to understand, Lifetime be hit or miss, girl. Lifetime literally be hit or miss. All right. Some of the movies hit, and then some of the stuff, we be like, girl, what is this? Okay? I believe the last Lifetime movie that I watched that actually was really, really good, what was it called? Um, Because I still got it on my... um. I got it on my DVR. Single Black Female. That was good. Like, I didn't even delete that off my um DVR. Okay, it was... I said, I'm running my Amber Riley was crazy. That was cute. That was cute. Um, But moving on from that, and also I think, like, one of the best movies that um Lifetime ever did was the Clark Sisters biopic. And I think that's because Mary J. Blige and Queen Latifah had something to do with that, plus the Clark Sisters themselves. So that was really good. And then that Wendy Williams biopic. Oh, that was good, too. So them was, like, my top three for right now, you know? And hit or miss. Truth be told, Lifetime, like, let's talk about it for a second. Because we don't talk enough about how Lifetime used to have some good reality TV shows, all right? And a couple of them I used to watch. Hands down, Bring It. Bring It had us all tuned in. We was like, DD4L. Okay, girl, we too big to do the major red moves or whatever, but we thought we could. Girl, I'm in here like, yes, do that shit, do that shit. Because I ain't never really seen nothing like that with the girls. I'm going to be honest. Before DD4L came in there, I seen some things, but I didn't know that like the young kids were actually doing this because I seen it on the college level, you know, um, the major rest. And I seen the... um. The gay guys, especially like doing prize, they do the jet set, J sets and stuff like that. So, and they had their little dancing. I'd never seen the kids do anything like that. So I was like, oh, this is, this is something good. I gotta, it, it was just making me tune in each and every week because the drama, the performances. Oh, it was on Divas of Olive Branch, baby. That lady, the coach used to give Coach Diane a whole time, okay? But, um, yeah, I enjoyed that show. I hope all of them are doing well. I know it's been some kind of tragedies here and there, unfortunately, with some of the girls being no longer with us. But other than that, um, that was a time. Also, girl, you had to be there for Little Women ATL when it first came out. Rest in peace to many, um, but... You had to be that girl. You had to be there. Because when I tell you, it was a mess. The way Minnie and Miss Juicy Baby used to go back and forth. Y'all heard that note? Miss Juicy Baby. I ain't had to show out for y'all like that. I ain't had to do that. I ain't had to do that. But I did. But no, let me stop. Um... I got it, I got it, I got it. Girl, sometimes I be surprising myself. I be like, girl, what? <laughs> you did that? Anyway, if ain't nobody else gonna big me up, bitch, I gotta big myself up. Remember that, okay? But, um, yeah, the way Miss Juicy used to get on, uh, uh, her name, and her name was Ashley. And Ashley was another Ashley that was on TV that embarrassed me, okay? That girl lied about being pregnant. That girl was just doing a whole bunch of stuff. And I just, I just... Uh, I liked her, and then I didn't like her. It was one of those love-like relationships. Like, uh, sometimes she liked her, sometimes she didn't. But she used to get in Miss Juicy ass, and Miss Juicy used to get in her ass, too. That shit was funny, okay? Um, but when she passed away, that's when the show just kind of, I guess, lost this. After the pandemic came in, it kind of messed things up a little bit. And then when Miss Juicy, uh, not Miss Juicy, but uh, Minnie passed away, which was so freaking tragic and unfortunate. And that was her mama's. She was her mama's only child. You know, I felt so bad for her mama back then. I still do. I hope she's doing well. Um, and them twins, left cheek, right cheek, not them two. But the um, left cheek, right cheek was the white twins. Were the white girls. And the one that had the, uh, not the one that was with the dude. The, one of them, she was so big-headed. I just couldn't stand her like... At first, I liked her, but then she let this uh, TV shit get to her head, and she was just so, uh, even her own friend fell out with her. Like, they, don't, they ain't even left cheek, right cheek no more. And uh, I'm talking about the other twins, right? One with the deadbeat boyfriend, baby daddy, okay? Oh, it was a mess. Y'all got to go back and watch that. Y'all have got to go back and watch that. I did say I was going to try to go look at uh, Little Women L.A., I, ain't, I I never got into that. 
And then, oh my goodness, for like a couple of seasons or so, there was Lil Women Dallas. And them bitches got into a fight up in uh, uh, what it was, like a uh, restaurant bar or something like that. And when I say they got into a fight, baby, they got into a fight. That shit was crazy. That's probably one of the better fights that I've seen on TV in a minute. I said, oh, wow. That was a time. Lifetime had some good stuff on there when they want to. They need to bring it back. I don't know what's going on over there. Overhaul that shit. Um, moving on from that. <sighs> Since we said some exciting stuff, of course, we got to bring the mood down just a little bit. Unfortunately, we got another school shooting that happened this past Monday. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't move y'all out after waiting stuff and kick y'all and everything. That is so rude and violent. But anyway, I apologize. Um, it was, what's the name of the school? That ain't it. That ain't it. The Covenant School on Burton Hill Boulevard in Nashville. It's a Christian private school, I think. And um, basically what wound up happening is um, some girl, they said she's a transgender, she's trans. Now, I don't know if she's trans in the way of male transitioning a woman or a woman transitioning to a male. But either way, it's disgusting what happened. And what's disgusting about it is the fact that what we've been hearing, we've been hearing about a lot of these school shootings that's been happening are either... You know, kids that actually go there, they're around that age, you know, they're teenagers or, you know, whatever. This person was 28 years old. Audrey Elizabeth Hill, this person was 28 years old. And you come to this school that you went to, and it is a grammar school. These are kids that are, I think it goes up to sixth grade or whatever. So you mean to tell me that you've been holding on or having issues, or I don't know. We don't even know what the motive was. And if we do, please put it down in the comments, okay? Either way, I don't care if somebody did something to you or said something negative to you when you were a kid. And yeah, it probably stuck with you, but that should have motivated you to prove them wrong or whatever. That is nothing for you to come back at the age of almost fucking 30 years old and take out whatever issue you had on three freaking nine-year-olds who got killed in this, unfortunately, and two 61-year-olds and one 60-year-old. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Like, it's just so ridiculous. And at this point, I'm just, I'm just so tired of getting on here. And you can tell, like, I don't even get, I'm frustrated, but I can't even express how frustrated I am at it because this is becoming way too much and way too often that we have been seeing it. Like, at this point, school shootings is like drinking water. You have to have it. And it's unfortunate that it's happening so freaking much to the point that I feel like some people and some of us are becoming desensitized to it because we keep seeing it and we keep hearing it. And it's just like, there's nothing being done about it. There's no gun reform. There's no nothing. Nobody gives a damn. You get up here, y'all do these news conferences. You get the president, you get the politicians or whatever to say their piece about it, but yet nothing gets done about it. So then we have more and then another and then another and then another. Like what? At this point, why do we even care? And I'm and I'm not even saying it like that. Like, meaning no. Why do the politicians care? That's what I'm saying. Because y'all not gonna say nothing. Y'all not y'all 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 blowing hot air. You're not gonna do anything to combat the issue. You're just gonna keep on arguing about whose dick bigger than whose in Congress, in the House of Representatives, in the Hill. That's just all you're doing, okay? And it's just ridiculous. You don't give a damn about this country the way that you claim that you do. But just y'all get upset when people don't want to pay the certain respect to the country, but it's not giving it back to the people. I don't understand that. And to that person who did this, I hope you rot in hell. And I'm sorry, I ain't never said nothing shit like that. 
but I just cannot get past the fact that you were 28 years old and you literally rode around that parking lot for a good while before you goddamn parked your car, got your ass out with all that fucking weapons and armors and best and shit on and you shot through that door and you was just going down the hall looking and I'm just sitting here like, what? What was the fucking reason? Them kids ain't do shit to you. I don't know what them adults were, but them nine out of tens, them adults ain't do shit to you either. Y'all gotta stop doing this stupid shit. Stop doing this stuff because you can't deal with life. It ain't our fault. It ain't our fault. It ain't those people's fault. You gotta sit your ass there and you gonna fucking do something about it. Do something to yourself if that's the case. Get your ass up and make it right with yourself. Okay? Go get you some goddamn therapy. Get out the house and go do something productive, okay? That's what you need to do. Anyway, moving on from that. Y'all, I'm just tired of talking about shit like that. It just makes me so goddamn mad. I ain't even want to mention that. I just knew it was going to bring the mood down and make me piss. Because what them... Ugh, innocent goddamn people. Um... Speaking of stupid people, Kanye West all of a sudden want to come out and put a post out on Instagram saying that he's no longer anti-Semitic and that he loves Jewish people after looking at Jonah Hill in 21 Jump Street. Jonah Hill has been gone from sight ever since you people came out. And he, he, he just didn't want to deal with it, okay? And I know he has like mental situations or whatever. Um, so he just he just wanna stay in the background for right now. And it's understandable. And you're gonna bring his name up and say you are now no longer anti Semitic because of Jonah Hill. <laughs> Jonah said, Leave me the hell up out of this, okay? I ain't got nothing to do with you. You ain't got nothing to do with me. Like, leave me alone, okay? Let me go back to what I was doing. Girl, don't nobody care about Kanye right now, okay? Not right now. So Kim Kardashian out here, girl, she about to make North a freaking business. One thing them Kardashians do is they will make a business anytime, anywhere, whether that thing fails or it goes, okay? Because, listen, they said she was up there trying to trademark stuff or whatever for uh, a skin line, fragrances, lotions, uh, um, toys and all of that stuff for dwarf. I said, wow. Wow. Truth be told, I wish I had parents that um, cared that much to do some stuff like that. But then again, you know, that can be a gift and a curse. Because sometimes it's like, are you doing this because this is what your kids want and you're trying to build a better future or is it because of what you want and you see the dollar signs and all of that stuff and it's just a, you know, a greed type of thing. Because, you know, you got a lot of money and you probably setting up the kids. Which one is it? I really do feel like she probably doing this because, you know, this is something that North can benefit from. You know, North be up on her videos doing her hair with her little Eco Style gel. I said, who is going down to the uh, the beauty supply store getting the Eco Style gel? Now, if she would have sat there with um that bottle of brown gel, I would have passed out. I would have said, girl, y'all got that down in the hood? Out there in Calabas? Who who beauty store y'all going to? They sell it up in Walmart? Because I ain't been inside Walmart in a long time, so I don't know. Okay, but um, I mean, do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. That's just if anybody care. Um, Suge Knight said that uh she's all he she's he all the way here for them doing like a um death row type uh TV show that's kind of like BMF, you know, but doing it on death row. And girl, I'll be here for it. Let me just tell you this: I love a good documentary, and I told y'all this. But what I really love documentaries on, not only just history stuff or whatever, but, um, you know, I do like crime documentaries. You know, like I said, I mentioned uh, in my other video, Waco, Texas, the Waco uh, American Apocalypse. Y'all need to watch that on Netflix. It's really good. Three episodes. And I'm telling you, once you turn it on, it's going to go by real quick. And you're not going to even realize that you're on episode three by the time you realize that you're on episode three. Okay? That's how quick, ugh, that's how fast it goes by because it's just action-packed. And it's unseen stuff. I mean, a lot of us have already heard or some of us have heard about David Koresh and Waco, Texas and that whole situation, the Branch Davidians. Oh, baby, this was back in the day when there was a whole bunch of 
Heaven's Gates and Jim Jones and stuff, but this happened in like 1993, you know, and he was a cult leader. Girl, he said he was the second coming of the Messiah. He was the Messiah. He was Jesus. I said, oh, all right. You know, he was fucking the men's wives and they was letting him. He was messing around with kids as these cult people always do, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, you got to watch it. And it's a couple of people on there that need to be in jail. Okay. David Thibodeau. David Thibodeau, you were sitting your ass there talking all about how, you know, the government set them up and they all didn't really do nothing. It was the government. They was the one that fired first and the government was the one that set this stuff on fire. Girl, you was talking so much shit about them and you got your big burly ass up out of that place or whatever and, and, and you ain't say shit about them kids that got hurt. I said, oh, we see what your focus said, okay, girlfriend? Um... And Miss Kathy, Miss Lady that was up in that green, uh, they, uh, gold shirt, that bitch need to still be up in jail, okay? She literally fixed her face on this documentary that came out in 2023, which means they probably filmed it in 2022, okay? And sat there and said, so y'all up here trying to say that, you know, David was up here having sex with underage girls or whatever. Truth be told, they were not underage. They was really, because ain't no such thing as underage. They were women. I said, what? 11, 10, 12, they're my kids, bitch. That bitch needs to go to jail, okay? I don't give a care. That bitch needs to go to jail. And if she got grandkids, please don't have them grandkids around her, all right? Because I wouldn't trust that whole none whatsoever but y'all need to watch it it is good if you like to look at stuff that happened and y'all know um waco texas gave birth to timothy mcveigh and his radicalism and y'all don't know who timothy mcveigh is look up the oklahoma city bombing that happened a couple of years later Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm that shit that shit hurt my heart because you want to know why innocent kids again and i mean real young kids they got killed up in that shit. And it was just really, really fucked up. But, you know, I like stuff like that. But I also like the uh, history of music. Mostly R&B and hip-hop. I will look at every hip-hop documentary. Every hip-hop or R&B series or whatever. That's why I was so into, um... Oh, my God. What was the movie? What was the TV series? Queens. With Brandy, Eve, and them, or whatever, and the Tory. I was so mad at the way that that shit went down, though. <sighs> like, it start, I hate when the show start off good, y'all. I really hate when the show start off good. It, 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 it went down quicker than Empire did. Empire started off so good, y'all. We was here for it. I mean, we was giving it ratings just about the first two seasons. First two, three seasons. It was everybody always talking about how... Oh, this is going up tonight. It was the number one for tonight. For the number one again for a fourth week, for a fifth week, for the second month in a row. It's been number one or whatever. It was just getting millions and millions of views. And then I feel like Empire kind of fucked themselves when they did that episode when um Cookie came down there in that goddamn gorilla suit. Now, granted, I understood the message that they was trying to put out there, but baby... That gorilla suit wasn't necessary. And that's when a few people jumped off the train. They said, that is my stop here, and I'm not taking back, coming back. It was a one-way ticket, and I'm not buying another. I said, oh, but I watched it till the end, okay? And let me tell you, from somebody who watched it from season one, episode one, to season whatever, last episode, the finale, it came apart for me probably the last three seasons, Okay. I said, what the hell is this? That season when Demi Moore came in there, that season when I think um Lucius had lost his amnesia had and lost his 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 memories or some shit, and Demi Moore was coming up in there. Oh, I was just really confused by that whole thing. That one season where he was dating his enemy's uh daughter and Lucius had came up in there with that matted up freaking uh dreadlock wig, and I'm gonna call it dreadlock because it was it was it was terrible. It was terrible. I said, what is this? Okay. 
uh, uh, they never finished the whole thing about, you know, Miss uh, Claire Huxtable was up in jail and she was talking to her kids and they was plotting against Lucius and we never knew what the plot was. But, you know, they had to go ahead and shut that down because um, COVID came through. But still, they should have ended that a long time ago because it had got goddamn ridiculous, okay? And then Queen started off real good and then all of a sudden somebody gets shot and it was like after the episode that she, the girl, the person got shot, it just went off the rails, okay? Her husband dying in the bed that, the way that he died. And, and, and then come to find out that he had a mistress. The mistress that the, the, the student that he was fucking around with, he was a college teacher. Uh, she pregnant, and we never saw nothing else about that. And then Eve character just left. And I understand that she had got pregnant during the, um, you know, Mr. Feminist. But they could have did that so much better. It's a whole bunch of us that had a whole bunch of good ideas that uh, could have made this whole work around her um, pregnancy. So she wouldn't have to be off the show. Or even if she was going to be off the show, y'all could have made it a different story and a better story. And they just dropped the ball. It just got real corny at the end. And I was so mad because I was so hyped about it. I was liking the story for one point And then all of a sudden it just got real like. Like, girl, what? You know? So, I would be... I'm seeing all of this. Like, girl, go ahead and put this out here, uh, Shug. I mean, you in jail. But, y'all, I know somebody gonna be like, did he sign his life rights away to uh, Ray J? No, he did not. Okay? It's somebody else. What is it? Um, what is it? Somebody named Whitney or whatever... They got his um life rights or whatever. So there's that. And um I hope that happens. Somebody needs to make it happen. Okay, because I'll be here for it. BMF is cool. I like the little drug game type of shit, shoot them out or whatever. It was nice seeing it was really nice seeing um Monique on there playing Goldie. She played that part. She played that part, girl. I love it. Let me tell you something. When Monique gets to acting, Monique gets to acting, okay? You know, whether it's a fool or whether it's some good shit, she know how to do all roles, all right? But, um, yeah, I would love to see a death row thing. And if you do death row, you should do a so-so death. Not so-so death, girl. Truth be told, you know how um BET did the uh, Rough Rider Chronicles and the Cash Money Chronicles? Did they do Cash Money? No, I think they did No Limit Chronicles or whatever. It was like six episodes, and then they did the Murder Inc. Chronicles and all that stuff. They need to do one on Social Death. They need to do one on Rockefeller. They need to do one on Bad Boys if they haven't done one. Oh, my goodness. BET, bitch, I'm getting y'all a whole bunch of ideas. Get it to fuck together and make it happen, okay? Uh, we need more people to come in and, and, and to watch the show and keep it, the, 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 the channel, and keep it flourishing. Now, if you do that, you had everybody coming together every week. To look at those episodes. Because it was good. It was good. And I still watched it over again. You know, it's not too many things that I rewatch. Okay. But um, y'all need to watch that. Speaking of rewatch. Y'all know what I've been doing. And I had posted it on my Instagram. And I had posted about it on Twitter. I've been rewatching my vibes. Let me tell you something. Okay. My vibes. Oh my goodness. The girls of Real Housewives of New Jersey will never be able to take the mob wives of New York. Okay. Girl, no. That is two different things, baby. One of the best reality shows ever. I don't care what nobody say. Drita, when Drita told Karen, get up, Karen, and start to beat her ass. I said, now, would that be a sneak? But she did tell her to get up. But you saw how she came in hot and heavy, so you should have kind of been on the fist and been, you know, ready. But I just can't tell. Either way, I was here for it. You know, it was kind of messed up, but I was here for it. Uh, Renee and Junya, okay? Junya, I would never, girl, I was looking at the first season, and I had forgot the way Renee had that breakdown when Junya got caught up in that sting, when it was like over 100 monsters and gangsters that got arrested. Bay, bay. And she was on the phone, and then her son was just looking, AJ was just looking at like, she was like, AJ, don't leave me. I said, girl, Renee was on something, okay? Renee was doing a lot. Y'all remember that episode when she um was at the restaurant with Karen? First of all, she told Karen to leave Carla's party. How the hell are you going to tell somebody to leave a party that she they was invited to just because you want to play mafia princess, bitch? We ain't mafia down no more like that. You daddy and Jet, okay? When Junior got her daddy locked up, oh, my God, that was so crazy. 
And then also when that man got drunk, when they were sitting up in that um, restaurant and he was hitting on Karen and then going to tell Renee that she needs to look, uh, lose 30 pounds. I said, bitch, and then this girl gonna call Junior down there. Man, you, Junior just got out of jail, okay? He's He got out of jail on bail, and the bitch about to go back, and you finna put him back up in jail because you finna get mad somebody came at you when you really wasn't mad in your business, and that man told you to lose 30 pounds, and you was finna get Junior and put up in jail because he was finna whoop that man's ass, but Junior got that man to give him an apology, uh, give uh, Renee an apology. I was like, all right, Junior. All right, Junior, mind you, mind you, Renee and Junior weren't fucking. Junior had a whole ass girlfriend. I said, oh, he still got that shit intact. Renee would do anything for that man before she got um her father knocked, okay? When um Karen fucked around and got Storm, the black guy. One thing about Karen, she'll go with a nigga in a minute. Mm-hmm, because her baby daddy black and everything, too. I said, all right. You know, look at the racial harmony that was coming together. Blacks and Italians, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it was always portrayed up in the TV shows and on the movies that the Italians be talking nasty and couldn't stand us black folks or whatever. But baby mob-wise, they kind of squashed that a little bit. Baby, they used to box, bitch. It was everything. It was everything. Oh, and rest in peace to Big Ann. She was the heart and soul of that. She was the heart and soul of that show, for real, for real. I miss her. <laughs> I miss her so much. Anyway, y'all put down on uh, comments. Who, what, what, what do you think was your best reality show to you? Okay, anything you know from. You can even put the real world, bitch, from back in the day. Cause truth be told, the real world. Oh, baby, that was a time. That was a time. when Remember, was it Real World Miami with junk, Drunk Ruthie, you know, uh, in tech, okay? Also, um, was it Real World Boston? Or which Real World was it when old boy slapped that girl who had Lyme disease when she got into the car? The black guy that slapped that white girl? I said, girl, I said, sir, that is... You know they don't play about them white women. And you slapped that bitch like it wasn't nothing and went back up in the house laughing. I said, what? <laughs> he opened up that door and said, hey, and slapped the dog shit out of her and kept on going. I said, wow. Okay, road rules. I don't know if y'all remember road rules, but it was one particular road rules that it was road rules semester SC with Veronica and uh, Anessa. Was it Anessa? Anessa, the black girl with the locks or whatever. Oh, my goodness. Veronica and her, oh, she could not stand that bitch. She could not stand Veronica. That shit was some good TV, okay? Some real good TV. Put it down in the comments what y'all thought, okay? I like to see it because I need to jog my memory and see if I can go find some of these things and rewatch them or whatever because we used to have a time back in the day, girl. Oh, I wish social media was around back then because we would have really, really been cutting up. But um, moving on from that, Jesse Williams, I need you to get your shit together, Okay. Because every time we hear about you these days, if we ain't talking about your dick that's up in the um, play or whatever, we talking about you either trying to get your child support lower or you in trouble for something. This time, he did a hit. He hit some lady in the Mercedes car, okay? And um, mama want to sue him for damages and for her losing wages and having to stay off of work or whatever because, you know, she got injured according to her stress and distress, okay? Emotional stress and all that stuff. And he don't want to show up for the death position. And the judge said, you're going to have to show your ass up in person. Because he tried to use the COVID situation and say, you know, he feared going out because of COVID. And, you know, um, since he's doing this play. And I'm sitting here like, sir, put a mask on. Triple mask. Put something else on your face and get that to the deposition. Because at the end of the day... You can catch it in there, and you can also catch it out there when you're doing your play because I'm pretty sure everybody up in there ain't going to be masked up, okay? Just, I don't really, I barely see people masked up these days, okay? So, like, that that really wasn't an excuse. Just get your ass up and get this over with, all right? And quit trying to avoid it. And speaking of Jesse Williams, let's talk about Grey's Anatomy right quick. End it. Now, I'm a Grey's Anatomy fan. I just seen each and every episode, okay? And... When I tell you that's one of the shows that kind of pulled at my heart, like, it'll put you in, like, 15 different emotions that you didn't even know existed, okay? But it's come to a time where 
You just need to end things. And I love it when a show knows when it's time to end it instead of just drawing it out and drawing it out and drawing it out. Baby, Grey's Anatomy is about to be renewed for a 20th season. And my thing is this. There is not even a person named Grey on the show anymore, physically. Mama left the show when it came back after the uh, a mid-season break, okay? Mama left the show the first episode, and then she's been voicing and narrating the show ever since. I said, girl, you ain't even got to show up. She said, girl, no, I just go into the booth, and I just, you know, talk about this, and I just read these lines, and I still get my millions. I said, I know that's the fuck right, and go right back to sleep with your kids. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, all right. What a great job to have, okay? You ain't got to do shit, but still get paid and don't even have to show up. Girl... Girl, Grey, uh, Ellen Pompeo, she ain't got to do nothing else, all right? Grey's Anatomy done got her set. Um, the only people that's still there is Bailey. And uh, and I'm talking about people that was there from the very beginning. Bailey and um, who the black doctor? The bald-headed black doctor. Oh, my God. Oh, what is his name? Let me look it up because it's going to be on my tongue. It's on my head. I know his name, but I can't tell you it. I hate them to happen. <sighs> Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. Cass. There it is. Richard Robert. Oh, yes. You know, in Grey's Anatomy, it was one of those shows that was just so freaking kooky-like. How is it that... Alex Gray is Meredith Gray mama. And then she was fucking around with Richard Weber. Okay. And then not only was that the issue, but you know, um Ellis was also married. Robert, Rich, Richard was married when they was fucking around with each other. And then not only that, but uh Ellis Gray, her husband. Meredith's daddy, he fucked around and had a baby who was Lacey Gray. And it was just, oh my goodness, it was like 15 degrees of separation. Everybody you looked at could have been related to Meredith Gray and Ellis Gray. Because then here comes the black sister. I said a black sister. Yeah, because Ellis and um um Richard, they had a daughter together, Maggie. And I'm so, she about to leave, okay? She about to leave next month. I think her last episode is going to be next week or the week after that. She getting on my goddamn nerves the way that she was acting with her husband, getting all upset at him because he wouldn't change um, fields of study or whatever. Girl, get up out of here. Meanwhile, you know, you get these new kids. They ain't got the flavor. They ain't got the flavor, all right? I just end the shit, bitch. End it, okay? I'm just, I'm tired. I'm tired. Y'all remember that episode when Hunt was uh, dating Christina and Christina and him was in the bed sleep and he had a PTSD episode while they was sleep a nightmare and he tried to, he choked her out. Baby. Now, say, I say choke me, but not choke me like that when I'm caught off guard, okay? Like, damn, you almost killed her ass. Ooh, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was some good moments on Grey's Anatomy. I ain't even gonna lie. Because I had some good crying on there when Lexi died. That was so sad. And then Mark Sloan did. When that dude came up in there and shot up the hospital. And Meredith was trying to save that dude from Mercy West. And she couldn't. She couldn't. And Mandy Moore was on there, and she was a patient, but she saved her because she wasn't hurt. But Dual had got shot, and she couldn't save him, and they couldn't get out, and she broke down, too. It was just really, really sad. It was really, really sad. And then Meredith, Meredith, she used to have it to Meredith all the goddamn time, and it used to get on my nerves. The bitch drowned, and she almost died. She got COVID. She almost died. She got something else happened to her. She almost died. I said, God damn, bitch, you have, like, how many lives you got left? I, I know cats have nine. How many you working on? Because she done died at least 15 times and came back, okay? And then remember the whole situation with, um, 
Arizona and Calliope. Callie, remember when Callie got, they got into that car accident and Callie almost died, bitch. Oh my God, I was crying. And then they did that whole musical shit and I was over it. I said, why the fuck y'all do this into a musical? Y'all can't be serious for nothing, all right? It was just a lot. It was a lot. It had its moments. And now, I don't even feel the same. I was like, in that shit, bitch, because I'm tired. Put some of your favorite moments down there from Grey's Anatomy. Let's talk. Anyway, Joe Brown, Judge Joe Brown, let me just tell you this. What you will not do, you will not raise up against Miss Shirley Ralph, okay? That's what you're not going to do. She is Black America's auntie right about now. And, um, you know, we got a couple of them. We got a couple of them. The ones that we don't play with, we don't play with Angela Bassett. And we don't play with Miss Shirley Ralph, okay? No, we will not, all right? Now, Miss Mama came out there and said uh, back some few years ago or whatever, I don't know where she was at. I think she was on the set or something or something. She said some nigga came around there and, uh, put his nasty tongue down her throat and all that shit and she didn't even consent to it and she said it was a tv judge and it wasn't judge mathis i said oh everybody didn't even do a process of elimination they just automatically said joe brown joe brown and you want to know why mr joe brown people said that because your reputation and the shit that you be tweeting and the stuff that you've been saying or whatever you a goddamn um you agree with Bill Cosby. You did a whole bunch of stuff. You're homophobic, you're sexist, you're misogynistic or whatever. We didn't seen videos from you back in the day when you told this girl. You said, oh, I wish I had a granddaughter just as hot as you. Like, what the fuck is that? And you getting up in your feelings because the people, not Miss Shirley Ralph, the people said that you did this. They put your name in there. Cheryl didn't mention nobody. She just eliminated one person. That was Mr. Judge Mathis, okay? She said it was not him. And she just left it up to uh, us to figure it out. We said any, many, mighty mo, baby. Catch a judge by his toe. Joe Brown, it is you, okay? You are the weakest link. Baby, he came out and said... He going to think about uh doing a defamation suit against her. I said, sir, you are a hit dog that is hollering, and we will not stand for it, okay? You know you did it. And then it was somebody in my Twitter acting so dumb. I mean, the people are telling her what he been doing, and she was like, well, I ain't never seen this. I said, bitch, Google, okay? Bitch, Google, we ain't saying this shit out of out thin air. What I can't stand is women... Ugh, and we've been seeing this so much. Women that be going out on, on the wrong side. Girl, you ain't got to always stand up for women, especially when they wrong, okay? But when you see the niggas are doing, and men are doing nasty stuff, ignorant stuff, wrong stuff, and you still going to stay by their side? Girl, what in the pick me? That old man ain't finna fuck you. Like, what's going on? But, um, yeah, Mr. Joe Brown, get that shit together. Um, Beyonce girlfriend, that was cute. That was cute. You know, she let Ivy Park go for a second, or Adidas let her go, uh, depending on who you talk to. Um, and she part of uh, what is this? Balmain's collection that uh did Renaissance Couture. You know, did a a a a, a dress for each, or you know, an outfit for each song for Renaissance. You know what? I'm going to be honest. I saw it. It didn't gag me and it didn't move me. I said, oh, what are we supposed to do with this? <laughs> I, girl, you doing every goddamn thing but giving us the visuals. Girl, at this point, I don't give a damn. Just give me the tour, okay? I really don't give a damn because at this point, I just really feel like the, the visuals coming out when the first tour date happens and that's just what it's going to be at. But, girl, I don't care. First of all, some of that shit... Maybe because I'm not a fashionista and I'm very much not feminine like that. So, yeah, I just didn't understand it. But, all right, it's cute. If that's what you like, that's what you like. Dude did that as a... Little tribute to her, said ain't nobody wearing that shit but her. So I said, okay, that's fine, because I don't know who finna buy it. Anyway, I, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. Sometimes I just can't help but be shy. But y'all gotta be honest. Did you like it? Did you like it? Like, I'm telling y'all, and this is this is the mark of being a real fan, okay? You can say you don't have to like everything. And people don't understand that. You can call a person out. You can, you can, you can say, like, this ain't the best, okay? This ain't the best. 
You know what? Now, girl, if you would have did some shit when you had your titties out like that, ah, oh, it was fine. But, you know, but other than that, it just wasn't, I just, oh, let me shut up. Because I feel like I'm going to just stick my foot in my mouth a little bit. Mm. But I feel like y'all in the greens with me. I mean, it, it, what am I supposed to do with it? What am I supposed to do? Oh, okay. Pretty. Somewhat. If you want to. Hmm. Let me just put that on there. Let me put this public. Give y'all something to look at before I put this video wise uploading. But um, yeah, girl. Let me see if I have anything else to talk about before I get out here. Cause y'all know I like to talk to y'all. Mm. Make sure I got everything. Grey's Anatomy, Kim Kardashian, Dad, Dad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's about it, y'all. Unless y'all want me to talk about something else, which I'm going to talk about. Um, I got to watch the Brother Husband show that's on TLC. I don't know if I could do that. I really don't know if I can do that. Like, share a person. Uh-uh, no. And then you probably, girl, being in a household with somebody who... I only get to fuck with, they get to fuck with both people, but I can't fuck with all of, no, no, no. I wouldn't be able to do that. If I ever get in a thruple type of situation, we all fucking each other and we all loving on each other. That's just what it is, okay? Orgy every night. That's just what it's going to be, all right? I don't, I don't, mm -mm. I ain't got time for, ooh. You know, and then that's just hard with women, especially because we got so, we so emotional as it is, unfortunately. We're a little bit more sensitive, you know? And so we get a little bit jealous and we get it in our feelings or whatever. Like, it's it's, it's hard enough dealing with one. I don't want to deal with two, unless I'm cheating. And you're a secret. You're a little secret. And that's how we should keep it. Everybody know, 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 know. Did anybody see ya? Coming to my house last night. No, we ain't see you coming to the house, but we showing us how uh, Latasha taking that money. Let me get the fuck up over here, okay? Did you want to do you got to lie? All right, all right. Get in the me with your girlfriend. The fact that she don't know that you stole that girl money. Anyway, let me get the fuck up over here. I'll see y'all later. Y'all be good, and I will see y'all. Have a good time. Have a good weekend, girl. The weather seemed a little bit nice. It's been sunny. It was a little bit cold today, but it was sunny as hell. So that's all that matters. Y'all be safe, and I'll see y'all tomorrow peace. Wait a minute. Today is Wednesday. Bitch, I'll see y'all last is Friday. Unless y'all give me something that y'all want me to talk about tomorrow, and I'll bring it to y'all. I, I don't care. I got some time now. I do. You know. So y'all let me know, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.